Hello everyone, this is Stan Heller with VectorVest Canada. In today's video, I want to show you and help you discover the power of RMA, the Relative Moving Average. This is a follow-up to my essay in VectorVest Canada Views from Friday, March 12th. And just before we begin, a quick risk disclaimer. There is risk in investing and everything you will see in here today is for educational purposes only and should never be considered as investment advice. The purpose here is to teach you about the VectorVest software and empower you to make your own investment decisions and these decisions are yours and yours alone to make. So what is Relative Moving Average, the RMA? Relative moving average indicates the relationship of two moving average lines, for example, the 3 EMA and its relationship to the 8 EMA. We combine them mathematically by creating a ratio of fast moving average to a slow moving average. And what it does, it measures the distance in percent between the two moving averages with a simple calculation the fast moving average is divided by the slow moving average. So I think you can see how helpful it is when we can search on the relationship between two moving averages and identify how far apart we want them to be um, in that search. And just note, because the RMA is a calculated value, it does require the use of our ProTrader module and ProTrader is included with your real-time subscription or you can purchase it separately. Call 1-88-658-7638 for details. That's our product support team. So when we look at the RMA levels, when the relative moving average is greater than one, the fast DMA, for example, a three, is greater than the slow EMA, for example, an eight. And we can use moving average, a simple moving average or the exponential or the weighted moving averages. And if the RMA equals 1.01, .01, then the fast moving average is 1% higher than the slow moving average. And therefore, if the RMA equals 1.10, then the fast moving average is equal to 10% higher than the slow moving average. If the RMA equals one, then the fast equals the slow moving average. They're not at, uh, they haven't crossed yet. And sometimes that can be very beneficial to search and find the stocks where these two moving averages, whichever ones you like, are together on the chart and haven't yet broken to the upside or the downside, but they may be ready to do so. And then when the RMA is less than one, just the opposite is true. The fast moving average is less than the slow moving average and the percentages you can see below. So how can we use the RMA? Again, we use it in our search engine in VectorVest and it can identify moving averages that are sloping higher and fanning out as a signal that it's time to buy. And this is especially helpful, for example, with the EMA squeeze strategy that you may have learned about in the October VectorVest Financial uh, Summit or the uh, strategy of the week presentation that followed um, that strategy in October. By measuring the distance between the price and a moving average, RMA can also identify stocks that are in extreme overbought or oversold conditions. So we can search for a condition where price has um, fallen far below a moving average, for example, the 40 simple moving average or a 50 moving average or even a 100 moving average and identify that as an oversold condition and stocks that are extremely oversold tend to revert or regress back to the mean average and move back up to that moving average. So that can be a buying opportunity for an aggressive investor. And I'll show you that on the US market. But first, let's go to Canada. 
And here is, for example, the original EMA squeeze strategy, the search that we use with a CI times growth rate sort descending. And you can see um, we have the stock price, price volume. We need to select split adjusted for price. And then in the operator, that opens up the pro trader add-on module and we can choose any of these technical studies. This one chooses the EMA study and we're looking for the EMA 5 crossing above the 8 EMA in the last five days and both moving averages are moving up. It does not tell us how far apart those moving averages are. In other words, how much strength there is behind that move. That's where the relative moving average can help us. But for now, this has been a very, very good search. When I run that search, as of uh, Friday's date, the March 12th, and I look at the graphs. I won't look at them all, but I'll just look at a, a few here. And I'll just go and zoom into a three-month graph. So you can see that the three moving averages are on top, and while there has been a cross, they've not yet started to really fan out such as they did back here, which gives us a little better indication of some strength behind the move. So here, similar situation, a little bit better. Sometimes if we take the price off, we can see it a little bit better, and then we can toggle the price back on when we want to make a decision. This one is starting, um, so that's, that's good on that one. Here the squeeze is on, so this actually identifies the squeeze, uh, such as the squeeze was back here, and then you want to see that fanning out uh, to really know that the, um, the move is underway. All right, so then what we can do from here is take this original search, and by the way, this last line uh, is important. Um, we get there again by the stock price split adjusted, and the pro trader operator of the moving average. But this time we're using one for the simple moving average, and that's the price. That's the price of the stock, and it's currently uh, above the 50-day moving average, uh, which is sort of an institutional level. Uh, a lot of institutions won't buy a stock unless price is above the 50-day moving average, and they will support price at that 50-day moving average. So we want it to be above the 50 for at least one day. Don't need, don't need the moving averages to be moving up. So that's the original search. Now I'm going to add the relative moving average. And everything again is the same up until the second last line. And then for the last line, this is where we're going to introduce the relative moving average. We go stocks, price volume, split adjusted, there's our relative moving average. And what we're going to do here is, again, choose the exponential, since that's what we're using up at the top. And we're going to take the fastest moving average, which is the five day moving EMA moving average, and then the slowest in our strategy, which is the 13. And we're just going to sort them descending by that relative moving average. So we are changing the sort. And you can use this line of the search in any of our strategies in VectorVest, any of your own strategies, uh, but we're using it for the EMA strategy. So now we've got our setup and our sort. We can run the search. And now I'm just going to graph them again and zoom in here through the three months. So now typically what you're going to see is you've got the three moving averages that have squeezed and have pulled apart and now they're separating, which identifies strength. This is actually a very nice separation here with all three moving averages. So you're seeing a pretty nice picture here. We do need to see price above the 50, which we do. And we see the separation starting to happen. 
and that's what we're looking for. And you'll see that pretty much all the way down the list. And you can see back here why we like that. Here's sort of the squeeze on this CTS chart back here. And then we start to get into a very nice uh, rally from there. So for swing traders, uh, this can be a very valuable uh, addition to your strategy. All right, so that is the EMA squeeze and how we use the relative moving average to increase our probabilities by purchasing stocks that have already shown uh, that there's some strength to the upside with the three moving averages starting to fan out or separate and pull apart showing strength. And the opposite would be true for the downside. And I've, I've sorted uh, the relative moving average here descending. And if I look at the numbers, anything above one, remember we said that shows that the fast moving average is above the slow moving average. And with GTT at 1.10, it's 10% above. The three is 10%, or sorry, the five is 10% above the 13 uh, moving average. So we can actually come back in and if we don't want to just sort the entire list, we could just say, gosh, anything above 1.02 would be a good level. So we just say greater than or equal to 1.02. And then that allows us to go back to our original sort, which was the CI times the growth rate. And we run that search. So you'll have a different list of stocks and they won't be in the order of the relative moving average but they'll all be above 1.02 or 2 percent above uh, the 5 above the 13. All right very quickly then I just want to take you over to show you the uh, how we can use the search to find stocks that are overbought or oversold and for a buying purpose, we'll look at some oversold conditions here. And I'll just go to the US uh, market here. So we're just looking for oversold stocks. We're not going to look in this case for ETFs. So I just choose stocks, filter by sector, does not equal. And then when in the value selected sectors, I would just select ETFs. So in this search, we're just looking for um, relative moving average, oversold stocks or ETFs. So we just choose in the parameter price volume. Again, the price split adjusted. The operator is the pro trader with the RMA. And in the value, this time we're choosing simple. And we choose a value of one to replicate price. And then the moving average, in this case, I'm looking for the 50 moving average. So I want price to be um, quite far below the 50 day moving average in, uh, for a buying opportunity. And I'm going to sort by ascending. So I've got the lowest numbers coming up at the top of my list. And I'll click OK. Some usual parameters, a minimum price that we like, a minimum volume. This is the average volume. And I also want uh, the number of shares to be 100,000 traded on the day of the search. So it's just stock, price volume, and there's the volume shares traded on the day and the greater than or equal to and then in the custom value I just type in the hundred thousand. But here's our RMA. So again uh, I'm going to add another line for the RMA because we do want a value for the RMA. There may be some stocks that have been just newly added to the database and the 50 moving average won't show up. So we want to eliminate those stocks and we do that by just creating a line here, stocks, price volume, 
Split Adjusted, Pro Trader, RMA, Simple, and we have 1 divided by the 50 moving average again. This time we're just choosing greater than and the value of 0 we type in. And we're eliminating the ETF. So now when I run that search, this is what we uh, come up with here. And we do like to marry this with some market timing, so some beaten down times in the market. So let me just go to our timing tab and click on the market timing graph. So the ideal times to buy this would be on our fastest timing signal after a pullback in the market. So for example, September 28th would be a good opportunity. November 3rd would be a good opportunity. And of course the big one back here, uh, March 25th after the COVID collapse and the market started to move up. So those would be good opportunities. Just make a note of those if you want to test it out for yourself. And we'll go back to the search. Let's just go back, for example, to that 9.28 date then. September 28, so I can run that search. So again, remember the market has been beaten down, so some of these stocks will be beaten down fairly strongly. And if we look at the graph, and again, September 28th, So that's all the way back here. Price was at $4.03 and it moved up from there to $4.22 and it just kept moving higher. $4.75. Four, sorry, I'm looking at the moving average, $6.21. <laughs> so, so you can see it's, it's moved up pretty nicely. I was looking at the moving average price. There's, there's the close price, 422. I guess it's because we're right on the moving average. We're seeing both. So it's t tended to move up, and that's what you're looking for. In this case, it, it was certainly far away from the 50-day. I better change that to the 50. There we go. There's our 50-day moving average on the graph. And you can see we're extremely far below. Now this one initially gapped even a little bit lower before taking off, but you have the benefit of knowing that you're buying at an extreme low, so set your stop price um, you know, accordingly. Don't let it get away from you, but uh, typically you're going to get a reversion to the mean or regression back to the mean, closer to the mean average, which is our 50 closer to the mean average and then it goes up from there. All right so that's how you would do that and um, I know from testing some of these stocks really had some some huge gains well beyond the um, gains in the VectorVest composite. Just a quick test from point A to point B of course right after the market collapse in March you're buying at extreme stocks that have been pushed down to extreme lows here on the 25th was our primary wave, I believe. I'll just double check it here. Should be a green light on it. There it is on the 25th. So this is where you would be looking at these types of candidates that have really been pushed far below the 50 day moving average and doing a quick test. Of course, you wouldn't hold them all the way uh, to the end, there were some confirmed down signals in there, or even DEW down signals. Let's just find one, even in November, so you could find those signals, run your test to there, and take some profit. All right. So just in wrapping up, on the RMA, I want to draw your attention to a special presentation 
Strategy of the Week video by Todd Schaefer, Manager of Research for VectorVest. This was on March 5th. If you want to go back, if you're a subscriber to VectorVest, we archive all these training videos. And March 5th in VectorVest University, you'll find uh, Mr. Schaefer's study of the 3 and 8 EMA with Contra ETFs. And by the way, that strategy that I just sold you for overbought, those uh, ETFs, if you just look for ETFs and not the Contras, they had explosive gains as well. But this was a quick test just when we did get a, a primary wave down. And this column shows the enhanced performance using the RMA. And this is the base performance, which was pretty good, um, you know, to protect your portfolio or hedge. But using the 3.8 relative moving average, you, will, you got improvements. So with that, I'll close. Thank you uh, very much for watching. If you wish to contact me about any questions or comments, or I hope you'll chat your comments in the video, but my email is stan.heller at vectorvest.ca. If you like this content and would like to see more, please do click on the like button or subscribe to our channel. That just helps grow our VectorVest community, and we appreciate that. So thank you very much, everyone.